This week has been a great week for music that I've wanted to cover, but I haven't had any new material yet. We've had some Gerard Way stuff, we've had some Matt Heafy stuff, we've had some Dance Gavin Dance stuff, and now we've got some Dayseeker. Now I like Dayseeker quite a bit, but I haven't done enough deep diving on them for sure. I haven't listened to an album to completion. I haven't really um, gone past a lot of their single stuff. Um, and features, of course, from Rory Rodriguez, who, who tends to be all over the place as far as features go. And, uh, yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to this new one. So without further ado, let's check out Neon Grave. Okay, true to form, we got some, uh, 80s -esque synth, 80s-esque synth. Good old proggy, slightly jaunty riff action. Another thing this week, great cinematography on these projects. It's a gorgeously shot video. Yeah! Oh, that's that synth element goes so great with this. It's only coming in at the end of each line. Oh, it's good shit. Oh yeah, that chorus moment's amazing. Everybody else is doing day seeker stuff, but like that's really nice. Clearly, I have not done nearly a deep enough dive on this band. What the fuck? That was hard as shit. Okay. Nice little flourish of them since. Oh man. Oh shit. Oh man. All right, P-Pops. Damn. Let's talk about it. Yo. All right. So that was Dayseeker's Neon Grave, and that was a really good song. That was a really, really good song. I do have a couple notes on like kind of pacing and structure and all that shit, but overall, really, really enjoyable. As we're gonna start off with that. All the performances are very consistent with what I've heard from Dayseeker before. So I'm not going to get into them in too much detail, but just like good guitar work, solid guitar work, some um, 
interesting, I wouldn't say totally memorable riffs, but some very interesting riffs, and they're exciting to listen to, you know what I mean? Um, they're definitely not going to catch and stick to your head too much, but I think that's mostly what the vocalist is for here. And sure enough, that chorus, again, very infectious, beautiful, and the way that they use the synth in it, you know, it's not just about having a nice synth. That can help a lot. That can really sell something for me, is just having some really cool experimental electronic elements in there. But the way they used it to kind of punctuate each line and then bleed it back out was great. It was amazing. That was something you don't usually hear in metal, which is really cool. Um, I'm definitely down for that. Even this modern age of metal, like I said, that uses a bunch of synths. You don't usually hear it used in that kind of accenting, almost dominant manner. So that was really enjoyable. The lyrics also very poignant, hit hard. I don't know exactly the meaning behind each and every single thing that was said, but the lines that stood out to me really stuck deep. And, you know, they, they just have a very nice, pretty way with words. And I'm always down for it. You know, they, they can be very curt. Um, and they can say such beautiful things without being overly poetic or elegant, which is interesting to me. Um, so it's a good duality. Now, let's get to that breakdown because they had a pretty heavy breakdown. Now, when I say I have a deep dove, I don't know if they go heavy. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know if this band has a tendency to do heavier music. Every song I've heard from them, especially heard them feature on, it has been clean singing. It has not been anything even in the spectrum of what I would call heavy at all. Um, I, the, uh, maybe I've heard a scream passage here or then, but nothing like a hardcore like breakdown, you know what I mean? Um, so to hear that was a bit jarring, especially on the back end of a song that's otherwise pretty beautiful overall. Um, and I'm not sure how to feel about it, if we're being honest. Like, I liked it. It was cool. I get that shock value. I was like, damn, I'm into it. All right, we popping. But then, like, when I sit back and I think about the rest of the song and I think about how the breakdown fit in there, I was like, mm -hmm, I'm not sure. It kind of, uh, it gives me the similar effect that Blessed Be gives me, which is one of my favorite Spirit Box songs um, as well. And, you know, it, it, it's another, you know, kind of beautiful song. And then it kind of has like some chonky, gritty um, guitars, and then it just drops into this gnarly fucking breakdown and then pops right back up into the beautiful. And I, I don't know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm not particularly sure how I take this one. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I'm gonna listen to it a few more times and see what I feel about it. But like right now, I'm not sure how well that breakdown fit in the song is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I know for some people it's going to work just fine. I know a lot of people love that duality. But for me, I kind of like to have a little bit more rhythm and flow, which is why I had issues getting into like the early 2010s of Metalcore when it first started. Um, why I'm more looking back on that stuff with appreciation nowadays. So yeah, that's a that's a, just like a little rant, just a little thought. But like uh, overall, the gorgeous song. Really loved it. Really, really loved it. And yeah, that's gonna be it for me guys. If you like that song, please check it out down below. Link to the original video is there. Go show Dayseekers some love. They did great work. Um, as for me, uh, Twitch link, TikTok now with uh, reviews, um, the, the Discord, Twitter, all that good shit down below. Follow me on those platforms to get updated on what I'm doing next, which is a lot of shit. I have my fingers in lots of little pots, not just reactions. So if you want that, it's down there. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and take care. Peace.